Dear students, welcome to TIPS, Techniques and Pathology for Students, mainly intended for postgraduates. The topic for the day is fixatives. I have intently divided this into two parts, and this will be fixatives part one. Definitions are definitions. No own words, please. When we were students, the first was the definition that we were asked to give. It is defined as the preservation of a tissue in as lifelike a manner as possible. Now, with the advent of multiple definition, I had compromised on one. A process by which the constituents of the cells or the tissue are maintained in a physical or chemical state so that they will withstand the treatment with various reagents with a minimal loss or distortion or decomposition. And incidentally, this is one of the trichrome slides that we are seeing, beautifully stained, no overstaining or understaining, and look at the clarity it has brought about. I would request your students to kindly by heart the definitions. Again, hope you are able to identify this friend of ours. Lot of holes and all, obviously it is the brain. And there are certain things which we should appreciate in both the pictures. One is there is a higher fluid level. And look at the volume of the specimen and the volume of the jar as such. So also an open bucket over here, in which a thread has been tied and it will be knotted to either the fat or to the basilar artery. Either way, it can be suspended in a bucket. And the period it takes can be as much as four to six weeks. Secondly, we should appreciate that the volume of the fixative is about 20 times the volume of the tissue. In this case, obviously, it might have to be replaced. What are the various factors that affect fixation? One, the size of the tissue. The former example would be adequate. Duration, temperature, buffer and pH. Concentration of the fixative, osmolality, additives, agitation. So this set you people should be knowing because they will be asking you during your practicals, what can be the factors affecting fixation, so on, so forth. And as I mentioned, the common denominator will be about at least 10 to 15 times the volume of the tissue. The duration again, for small biopsies, it can be as minimal as one hour, but for larger ones, a much longer duration is needed. Temperature, the room temperature is the prescribed temperature. Whereas for electron microscopy, it will be zero to four degrees. A buffer will have to be used so that you maintain the pH at around 7.5 or 6.8. The concentration of the fixative, this is of paramount importance because usually we send 10% formalin, but it happens to be diluted when it comes from the theater and the fixation is not adequate enough. Osmolality indicates the permeation. Sometimes certain additives can be used or we can always call them as post fixation. Agitation will definitely improve the permeability and the percolation. Again, a superb diagram, this is called the brain jar, a suspended one. Please appreciate that all surfaces are exposed to the fixative. Sometimes you find that large specimens are allowed to rest at the bottom, as a result of which the bottom will not be fixed. We find that it has got a different stain. We call it a fixation artifact. And coming to the factors as such, so pH can be somewhere between 4 to 9, 6.8 is adequate. In electron microscopy, 7 to 7.2. The penetration varies according to the 
tissue as such. By which I mean fat, for example, has got minimal permeability, whereas lung will be having a maximum permeability. Thickness of the tissue is always important. I shall tell you why, and by this time you also will be knowing. Beyond about 0.5 centimeters to 1 centimeter, the fixative does not penetrate. Either it gets saturated, or by the time it penetrates, there has been an autolysis that sets in. Temperature is the room temperature, 37 degrees centigrade. An electron microscope is 0 to 4. These are some factors. Kindly memorize these lists. Now, what are the effects of fixation? What does it prevent? What does it permit? Prevention means it prevents autolysis, it prevents heterolysis, it prevents putrefaction. Autolysis is a destruction by its own lysosomal enzyme, whereas heterolysis is by the infecting inflammatory cells or the bacteria. Putrefaction is superadded. Physical distortion, a change in the shape and volume, is also prevented by fixation an ideal fixative. Desiccation. So it prevents removal of the moisture or the shrinkage of the tissue. These are some of the advantages of it, which I'll be going to the list later on. And what does it permit? The tissue is very soft. It allows it to develop a rigidity. There is increased permeation. Clear staining follows the fixation. And the tissue is preserved in as lifelike a manner as possible. Also, it improves the optical differentiation as though your eyes are able to pass through the tissue. So what it prevents, what it permits. Look at the slide over here again. Superb, though I have taken it from the net. Each and one of the cells you people can see the nuclear cytoplasmic differentiation, the basement membrane and the cellular components. Amazing. Coming to the methods of fixation, there is something called as heat fixation. We do it in an acid fast stain itself. Perfusion in solid organs, particularly after autopsy. Immersion technique. I had shown you the brain with the jar. Vaporization and phase partition method, by which you find that through a process of osmosis or osmolality, it permeates into the tissue. The basic concept is this. This, of course, we people would have been doing, experiencing, etc. Whenever there is a tissue, this is a mastectomy specimen, and you find that it has been cut into slices, not exceeding about one centimeter. And in between, usually we soak cotton with formalin and then insert. But in this case, it happens to be a a filter so that you find that the fixative is absorbed and it permeates from both sides. Hence, even though the thickness of the tissue is one centimeter, the fixative has to pass through a depth of only 0.5 centimeter. The other 0.5 centimeters is covered from the other side. By this way, you find that the tissue will be preserved and later on there will be no ambiguity. The multiple methods of slicing and giving the bits shall be done later on. But ultimately you find that there is a beautiful slice of tissue along with the tumor, the resected dents, as well as the nipple and areola are all well displayed. We shall go to the grossing of specimens at a later date. Here the concept of this slices of bread will have to be imp impressed upon you. Nature of the tissue. There are some tissues which will have to be taken utmost care of. Particularly when we are doing an autopsy, the adrenal used to be one. Gall bladder in this case. Having seen the earlier specimen or slide, I hope you people will be able to misery, appreciate the misery in this. The connective tissue on the contrary, undergoes lesser amount of degeneration, be it collagen or fibrin or fibroblast, etc. Bone and cartilage undergo the least destruction. Kindly compare these two. In one, it is an amazing microphotograph in which every component inflammatory cell fibroblast epithelium is 
preserved, whereas hardly anything is discernible in this. Common sense sometimes is very uncommon. So I thought that this example will be apt. A story of the Gulliver and the Lilliputans. So just the size for comparison. On the one side, I am finding a massive enlarged spleen weighing more than about 1 kg. And on the other hand, I find that there are some biopsies which have been taken from a soft tissue. Probably it is a needle biopsy from the breast, through cut biopsy. So in this case, this amount of fixative itself is more than adequate and it is permeating from all sides. And in no time, maybe about half an hour, the fixation will be con complete and we leave it for another one hour for a precaution. Whereas in this, if this splenectomy specimen on a Friday is left as it is to be grossed on Sunday or Monday morning, it is autolyzed because the thickness has to be penetrated. And as I told you, beyond 0.5 centimeters, it is not possible. Again, a wonderful one. If the surgeons and the theater staff are taking this amount of precautions, we will not be reporting on an autolyzed endometrium or trying to compromise with the report. So obviously you find that the external surface will be penetrated with formalin, whereas the internal surface they are injecting in so that the endometrium and the cervical mucosa will be fixed to some extent. And look at the effect of the non-fixation. I find that the cells are all going apart and the stroma is giving way. I do not know whether it is a degeneration in the menstrual phase or an autolytic degeneration on its own. So the meaning of this quote is we should be compassionate, not only with the human being, but also with the tissues. You should know the size of the spleen by closing your eyes. And you should know the soft texture of a biopsy by not feeling it. That should be the amount of compassion you should have towards the tissue. What is the mechanism of action of any fixative? So the denaturation of the proteins is prevented and there is a precipitation also. As a result of this precipitation, you find that they form a kind of a meshwork and they hold on the other constituents in force. Look at this particular one. There are various components over here, the organelles. There is a cytoplasm, there is a nucleus. So we have got fixatives of different kinds. Cellular fixative, cytoplasmic fixative, nuclear fixative, etc. Beyond that, there is also a cell membrane which will be having the receptors for the special strains as well as immunohistochemistry. So unless the tissue is going to be well preserved, all the following stains will be defective or futile. And no fixative will penetrate a tissue beyond one centimeter. What are the aims of a fixation or what is an ideal fixative? It should prevent autolysis or putrefaction. It should penetrate evenly and rapidly. It should harden the tissues. Harden means not a bone like, but subsequently firm so that it could bear the insult of the microtome that is to follow. It should increase the optical differentiation. It should not cause shrinkage or swelling. And it should not react with the receptor sites and it will not interfere with the subsequent staining. Immunohistochemistry, it has to be appreciated. Sometimes formalin interferes and we do have a treatment for it. It must be cheap, it must be easily available. So this is our 4%. What we give is only a 10% formal saline, but then when it is diluted, you find that it is a 4% formaldehyde. For your eyes only, there can be certain artifacts which can be created during fixation. This is not uncommon. I find that there are some colorless clefts because it is a fatty tissue. Cholesterol is fat and the fat is dissolved by alcohol. Therefore, I see them as 
needle shaped crystals sometimes this can happen as a precipitation also secondly you cannot appreciate the nucleus of the cytoplasm leave alone for that matter a gland or anything there is an autolysis that has already set in and sometimes i cannot give a diagnosis of free of tumor or it has tumor look at this in fact there is supposed to be a liver tissue in the background and look at the normal liver a beautiful radiating cords of hepatocytes from the central vein and here again the autolysis has already started setting in there is a bulging of the cell there is a rupture and i find that it is going in for autolysis here the autolysis is 100% complete again this is an again we will not be able to say that it is a kidney at all maybe some amount of the glomerulus over here i can make out by the outline but it is a futile effort there is some amount of eosinophilia i should not call it as thyroidization so autolysis can be because of the lysosomal enzymes within such as catepsins putrefaction by the bacteria denaturation major change in the original native state without any molecular alteration and osmolality so sometimes when it is changed there can be increased permeation or decreased permeation leading to either stickage or rupture of the cell look at the beautiful heart that they are holding so here again after the autopsy it has been injected with the dye there has been some amount of slices the blood has been flushed out and it has been filled with formalin fixed later on they will be filling it with plastinated material so that it is something that can be preserved forever and you can hold it synthetic resins are material two processes you should appreciate one is called diffusion you must have heard of the steps of brownian moment and chemotaxis brownian moment is a random purposeless moment so something that is over here it becomes evenly distributed that is all whereas chemotaxis is a unidirectional movement towards an attraction osmosis is also somewhat parallel so there is an increased concentration over here this is supposed to be the membrane which the fixative crosses and then it gets over evenly within the tissue for this of course the various factors such as time the thickness of the tissue agitation temperature volume of the fixative etc matter so recall a large specimen like this it is always a danger of getting autolysed there is something called as chemical fixation it utilizes the organic and inorganic solutions to maintain adequate morphological preservation it can be by means of coagulation cross linking compound and this is a classification of fixatives which i would like you people to kindly memorize there are two systems of classification as i told you earlier based on the structure of the cell microanatomical the correct relationship of the tissue and the cells to each other is well preserved it is called microanatomical cytological fixative your book of culling gives it very nicely and histochemical fixative both bancroft and culling along with lynch explain this in detail so this is one way of classification of the fixative baker on the contrary he has defined the fixatives into coagulant fixatives and non coagulant fixatives and coagulant fixatives are all the aldehydes over here formaldehyde glutaraldehyde or the oxides osmium tetroxide dichromate acetic acid these are all the coagulant fixatives non coagulant means it can be alcohol zinc salts mercury chromium and picric acid these fixatives in the next class i shall be coming to so that you will know the applications of them what is it are we seeing it has been just removed from the theater and it is over here imagine what will happen if the surgery was done on friday and the theater staff has not sent it to us by friday itself left for saturday and sunday and monday it comes to us in a 
bucket. Obviously, total auto life. Anyway, by the way, what specimen is this? It is supposed to be a collapsed but newly operated surgical specimen of the kidney, which has got a hydronephrosis. The common problems that we are facing is this. Always I used to tell my postgraduate, please cut the specimens. Even if you are having immense amount of work, bisect so that the inner component will be exposed. Look at this hemorrhagic areas. Obviously, these will be getting fixed. The endometrium is one of the most vulnerable areas. The fib muscular tissue and then the fibroid, etc. We need not bother that much, but still we should take the precautions. Self-preservation is the first law of nature. So try to preserve your tissues, preserve yourself, preserve your conduct, preserve your identity. A lot of moral sciences. Samuel Butler adds off. There are a couple of specimens on the screen. I would like you to appreciate the difference. So this is a solid tissue or organ. So Going by the shape of it, I can say it is an ovary or better still, it is a lymph node. Cut surface is also solid, yellowish, and there are areas of hemorrhage. That is why even a lymph node should be like But then this is supposed to be a retroperitoneal malignant tumor, a sarcoma. So what will happen if it is not going to be fixed? And even if you are going to put it in tons of formalin, it will not get fixed because the percolation will not be there. Therefore, slicing might be managed. And it is very much reflected over here. And it is one of the diagnoses that has been made. It is a chromophobe carcinoma that is having a sarcomated appearance and then it is showing massive autolysis. If such a slide comes to the pathologist, he or she will be having nightmares in reporting it. The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. A beautiful quote. So sometimes if a mistake is not identified, it does not mean that I am correct. And dear students, thank you for being the reason I smile in life. To be continued, see you in part two.